Hey, sports fans. Thank you for joining me for the Draw Along Show. It's Thursday, second show of the week. Hope you have something to draw with, such as a pencil or a pen or a marker or a crayon or a nice katana sword that you have found somewhere in an old field. And, uh, you know, who knows how it got there? Those are sharp. Be careful with them, okay? Dip them in a little mayonnaise and draw all over the floor. Up to you. As long as you have something to draw with, we're in good shape. Let's say hi to some folks who are joining us here in the chat. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, I am following the chat at behance.net slash adobe live. How do you like my enunciation there? You can also go to be, like to be or not to be, dot net slash adobe live. And that is where the chat is being monitored by yours truly, your host, Kyle T. Webster. Thank you for joining me again. What's up, Steven and Bruce and Umicorn and Ruth? Hello and Sam. Hello and Mercurial. Hello. Nice to see you all. Uh, you have a question for me, Bruce. I see it says question. Not sure what that uh, might be, but just go ahead and throw it in the chat and I'll let you know what's up. Okay. Uh, so the Draw Along Show is for all ages and all skill levels. We start with a little drawing that everybody can do together. Okay. Very simple. And then we follow that up with something in the middle. It's always different. Today, it's going to be a what is it, where you have to guess what I'm drawing. Only takes a couple of minutes. Most people never get it right. It's kind of a tricky game. Then we're going to finish with the old animal and activity game, where you can suggest for me an animal doing something funny or strange or weird, and I will draw it for you in the little time we have remaining. Okie dokie. So get your brains cooking on some cool ideas for what that might be. When I say animal, it doesn't have to be an animal. We've done dinosaurs before, as well as monsters. So these are options for you. Alrighty. So how's the weather out there? Hope you guys are doing okay. Um, you know, when it gets cold like this, people stop exercising, they stop walking, they start, they uh, stop running, and all these good things. And uh, I have to tell you, um, my wife said to me, Kyle, I don't know, looks like you're uh, starting to fall apart over there. Maybe you should do some lunges to get back in shape. And I said, yeah, that would probably be a big step forward. Oh my gosh. All right, I think it's time for us to do some drawing. Got some other folks uh, coming in here. Hello, Timothy. Nice to see you. And Clever, what's up? Christian, hello, hello. And Bliss is here as well. Nice to see you all. All right, let's get ready to draw. Remember, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things. And what are they? A straight line, a zigzag, or a curvilinear line. Could be an S curve, C curve, right? You can do these things. I know you can. Let's get cooking. Here we go. We're going to start with a straight line that goes a little something like that, okay? And um, we're going to follow that up. You know what? I'm going to start over and make that a little longer. I want to draw bigger for you guys so you can really see what I'm doing. I think it's important. Sometimes when you're watching this on a smaller screen or a smaller device, it's hard for you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to draw big today. So there's that first line, okay? Now, watch this. We're going to step it in a little bit and angle up slightly like so and do the same on the other side. So far, so good. And just close that off. All right, there you go. That is the beginning of our drawing. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, four lines, and we're well on our way. Now from here, we're going to draw down almost a perfectly straight line. In fact, if you want to make it perfectly straight, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to angle mine slightly inwards, slightly inwards, slightly inwards, and slightly longer than these two semi-vertical lines we drew just a moment ago. Okay, everybody cool? Everybody with me? Now, I want you to step it down a little ways over here, and we're going to draw a slightly horizontal line, but it's going to have an angle to it. Check it out. We're going to go like this. Bum, 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 bum. All right, now notice I didn't go all the way to the end. Okay, left myself some space. Now, from this side, we're going to come over here and stop about in the middle, like that. All right, so this one's kind of overlapping that other line. All right, make, hope that makes sense for you. Okay, so far so good. Now, in this space here, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw an oval, all right? It's going to be like this, oval. Okay, see how, see how long those ovals are? All right, they don't have to be perfectly identical, but that's the next step, all right? Now, we don't do this very often in the Draw Along Show, but we are going to do some coloring, okay? So check it out. I'm just going to, in this space around these ovals, 
Okay, and above those two lines we drew a moment ago, I'm just going to fill that all in. See that? Filling it in. Okay, that's what we're doing. Everybody with me so far? Hope you are. Hope you're doing okay with these drawings. Now, from here we're going to angle out this away. Zing and zang. Same thing on both sides. Alrighty? Stick with me, folks. This is going to come to life. You're going to love it. Uh, from here, we're going to go like this. We're going to, from these corners, we're going to cut inwards like this. Uno, e dos. Okay? Got it? And then we're going to cut back out again, but not at the same kind of angle. This is going to be a little less extreme. See that? Okay? So, zing, zang, zing, zang. There you go. Okay, make sure you use the same sound effects I do so your lines are identical. From here, we are going to bump out. Here come those lovely C curves. Are you ready? C curve number one. And number two, there we go. Okay. Now notice that these C curves are pretty shallow. Pretty shallow C curves, okay? All right, from there, imagine that this line keeps on going right through here and on down like so, and on down like so, okay? And now from here, remember this little overlap we have? Watch this, we're gonna go towards the center like this, and then we are just gonna bring it straight on down this away. All the way down it goes like that. Notice it's slightly longer than these two lines, okay? I'm just gonna connect this one here and then this one is gonna stop a little higher. Down it goes and it stops about there. Okay, so we have another overlapping effect. Right there, a little overlapping. Okay, now from here, we are going to come down and curve into here, watch. Down and then a little curve at the end, okay? And down and a little curve right there. Okay, whoops, I didn't make that one long enough, it's gotta Sort of curve a little closer to the bottom of that C curve, okay? And then from here, we're gonna go one, okay, and two. See how these overlap? One and two, all right? They go right to those corners, just like that. And here, you're gonna let this go. This goes over here. We're gonna crisscross these in an interesting way, okay? Up we go. And we do that. Up we go, and we do that. Okay? So we're creating sort of some wrinkles there. Excelente. Now, from here, all right, just above the C curve, we're going to come down and then curve, uh, uh, curve it out. Watch, I go down like this, and then I curve it out this way. It's another C curve. We like these C curves, don't we? Okay. And down. C curve. Uh -huh. All right, we're almost there, gang. Now, right about here, I want you to draw a line down to about there and over and up. All righty, see that? And sticking out of here, you go down like this. And right here, you're going to scoop it out. Scoop it out. All right, look at that. What do we have? We're drawing a spy today. It's a spy. All right, we're almost done. Now from here, you're gonna do another C curve. Watch this. C curve, stop right about that. Look, it's not as low as this one. A little higher up, stop right about there. Curve that baby like so, and up we go. Looks like a little noodle, okay? Pasta. Maybe I'm getting hungry for dinner. That's what's going on here. Down and a scoopity scoop, okay? So it's like he's walking towards us, all right? Do a couple little lines down there to show that. Now, put a button right there and another button right there and just make your way down with even spacing, more or less, till you get to about here and you say, okay, that's enough buttons for me there, that's enough buttons. Here you got a little detail right there, a little detail right there, all right? And last but not least, look at this, little eyeballs off to the right, looking shifty, right? Spying on somebody, little line right there. And bam, 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 there are those action lines. We love the action lines. 
Okay, slide him on over here. There is our, you draw it for the day. We drew a spy. He's up to no good. What's he spying? Who, who, who's he spying on? I mean, who is he spying on? Who is that spy spying on? It's time for the old, what is it game? We haven't done this one in a while, where you have to guess what I'm drawing. I will show you. Okay, it's very easy. These drawings, usually, I just think to myself, well, gosh, they're bound to get it. But it doesn't really happen that often. Are you ready? Here we go. A little curve like that, okay? And then we come on down like this, and a down like that. And then I go like this, and like that. And then a one, and a two. And then we go out like this. Out like that. Oops, I get that a little bigger. There you go. And uh, there you go. Actually, I'll make these ears even bigger because, you know, oh, I gave it away. I said ears. Shouldn't have said that, Kyle. Just, I've given it away. What is it? <gasps> let's see. The game is Trixie, says Mercurial. This game is Trixie. It is indeed. It is indeed. Okay, let's see. Um, a doggy. A cow. A sheep. A salty sea puppy. <laughs> oh, someone's getting close there. Cute little fella, says Harry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, secret agent man, Timothy singing in the chat. I love it. Um, a battle droid. Hmm, that's a very interesting guest. Well, let's see. What is it? What is it, folks? I'm sorry to tell you that once again, I'm being tricky. Your guesses are all very good, but I'm just going to flip them over like this. Okay. And pay attention to what happens here. We're going to go up like this. Boop. And like that. And we continue that out to the sides. And we do a little one, two, and a one, two, and a one, two, three, four, five. And you know what's going to happen, don't you guys? If you've watched this show before, you know where this is heading. I know. It's always the same gag, but I never get tired of it. Yep, here he is again with his floppy hat. It's our friend, the salty old sea dog. Once again, out for a little fishing time, right? So sorry, but you know, if you played this game before, you know how it always ends. It's the same ending every time. What can I tell you? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, we're gonna slide him on over here. There he goes, and you know what time it is. Uh, by the way, good guesses, nevertheless, okay? Oh my. So it is time for us to do a little um, uh, animal and activity game, of course. So, oh, as always, we have to pause for a moment and we have to do a little audience appreciation. It's appreciation station, everybody. Today we're appreciating our friend Timothy. Timothy, thank you for watching the show. And uh, we had entered the National Snowball Fight competition a while back. I don't know if you remember this. It was years ago. And we made it to the finals in the two-on-two -two category. You and I were paired up. And they gave us in the finals, they said, okay, new rule. You only have three minutes to prepare as many snowballs as you can for battle, and then battle must commence. And I was so panicked. My hands were, were slipping all over the snow, and I was trying to make the snowballs, and I was freaking out. And I glance over at you, Timothy, and oh my gosh. Not only were you building the snowballs super fast with your hands, but you had taken off your shoes and you were building them with your feet and your toes. You had trained all night outside in the snow that night before the competition to be able to make snowballs with your feet. Amazing. So of course we had most, most blah, 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 blah. we had more snowballs than our competitors. And we just overpowered them and we won. So brilliant. You are really something. I want to thank you for your uh, incredible training and your dedication. And um, I don't know what you did with the prize money, but I bought a bunch of art books. And there you go. It is time now for the animal and activity game. What have we done in the past? You know, if you follow the show, you know, but we've done things like this. We've done a surfing monkey. We've done a bat singing opera. We've done a gator on a pogo stick. <sighs> Lots of cool things. Yesterday, we drew Frankenstein's monster carrying... A present. How nice. A little holiday spirit there. So throw your ideas in the chat 
and uh, I will see what kind of amazing ideas you come up with, and we'll see what we can draw. We have about nine minutes left, uh, so not long. Do what we can here. We have uh, some suggestions pouring in already. Clever says, beavers picking a holiday tree with one climbing to its top. Wow, multiple animals in a single drawing. That's scary. Uh, Mercurial says, an arctic fox building a snow fort. That's cute. Um, Umicorn, a caterpillar blowing soap bubbles. Well, that's fun. A migrating goose hitchhiking, says Steve. Steve always has one of these uh, illustrations that really tells a story, and it's kind of like a pun. I like it. Lots of fun there. Those are good. Uh, Mud Skipper, family vacation. A mouse on the parallel bars, hula hooping with its tail. It's a lot going on there, Ruth. A mouse on the parallel bars. Oh, holy cow. Um, Steven, a shoe bill. Haha, <laughs> we're not drawing any more shoe bills on this show. No, no, we're not doing it. A snail making a snowman, says Bruce. These are fun ideas. All right, we've got to pick one quickly. Let's see here. Chipmunks building an igloo. That's cute as well. Timothy, nice one. Um, oh, boy. Everyone's doing something kind of snowy here, except for uh, the, the caterpillar, I guess. Um, the mud skipper. I don't know how to draw a mud skipper, Harry, but it's a fun one. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, let's do the snail making a snowman. Sure, Bruce. I like it, too. All right, Ruth, I like that one, too. Snail building a snowman. All right, here we go. Got to get the light blue color for sketching, and there it is. Ready to do its magic. And let's do it. So, snaily, let's get this snail right here. It's going to be pretty excited about his snowball, uh, snowman that he's making here. Give him a little toboggan, or what do you call it? A, and I guess they, they call it that in Canada, right? Toboggan? Winter hat? Is that all we say in the, in the States and elsewhere? I don't know. Uh, you call it what you want. We all know what it is. And um, I'm going to have to like sort of fake that he has sort of hands, I guess. <laughs> Something like that. You know, it's like the the squishy kind of snail body is, is somehow making a sort of a hand shape there. I don't know what you mean. Okay. Uh, up we go here. I'm trying to think, what does a snail's shell look like? Let's make sure I get this kind of looking right. That looks about right to me. And he's in the snow, but I'm going to have that little bit of tail sticking out there. Um, and let's see how he's doing here with his snowman. So he's going to have these bits here and a little, little hat. Don't ask me where that snail got the hat. I don't know. And you know how big snails are. So where did you find this tiny little hat? Maybe you got it from a little toy somewhere or something. And the tiniest ever carrot known to uh, known to mankind. All right. Maybe maybe no mouth. I don't know. Should we put a scarf on this um, on this snowman? What do you think? There we go. Okay. How's that look? Pretty good. I think that works. Okay, scarf has to have a little part right there that's just kind of Fold it over, falling down like so. I have another little bit just underneath it. Coming out that, that way like that, okay? And then we're no tangents, Kyle. No, we don't do tangents in this show. Okay. Let's get the darker blue and let's take our sketch and knock it back a little bit. And let's draw on top of that brand new layer. Um, also, by the way, somebody had a question. Was it Bruce? You had a question you wanted to ask me. I'm not sure if I saw it in the chat. I'm just going to quickly fly back through here and see if you asked me that question. If not, could you throw it in here while I'm drawing the final here in case you have a question about something? 
All right, here we go. Ooh, sometimes these little ellipses, they just, they just work on the first pass and I get so excited when that happens. Um, snail, apple snails are big, are as big as apples, says Clever. Never heard of an apple snail. We get snails sometimes in our backyard here. They're pretty small. You know what we get a lot of here? Slugs. I feel sorry for those animals because their name is just so unappealing. Slug. There's just no way to make that sound nice, is there? What's your least favorite animal, folks? Everyone's got to have one. You know what mine is? Well, I, got, I got two that are tied, but actually I think still topping the list is cockroaches. So just, ugh, hate them. You know, I grew up overseas and I spent four years in Singapore. And Singapore is a beautiful, beautiful country. But one thing you can find over there without too much trouble, if you know where to look, is cockroaches. Ugh. Not a fan. Um, Kyle wanted to know if Lotties can be brought into Fresco. Not yet, Bruce, but we have already had that question come up a few times from other folks. So naturally, it is on our radar as something to think about for a future thing that we can support. And since we have vector brushes in Fresco, it certainly makes sense that we would be thinking about that, doesn't it? So good question. All right, here we go. There's that slimy little snail hand there. I didn't tell you what the other animal is that I absolutely hate. It's also an insect, by the way. Mosquitoes. What purpose do they serve other than spreading disease and being nasty? I don't know. Somebody tell me. Any um, etymologists out there who can tell me if mosquitoes really serve any real function besides being awful? They spread malaria. They spread Zika. They are horrible. All right, let's do this show. We'll come around this way. And around again. Whoop. And around again. I get questions often about, Kyle, what is that brush you're using? And I tell everybody, you can get this brush for free on my Gumroad page. KyleTWebster.gumroad.com. It's called the Doozy Inker, D-O-O-Z-Y. And if you like the way it looks when I'm drawing with it, and I, I think this is just a great general purpose inking brush, then by all means, go snag it for yourself. Throw a few little trees out there in the distance and uh, little mountains. And let's hide our sketch. And there you have it. You have a snail building a snowman. Okie dokie. All right, folks. Thank you very much. Fun suggestion. I enjoyed it. Hope you all did too. 
And I want to say thank you very much for watching the show, for hanging out, and uh, remember that tomorrow is my master class at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 1 p.m. Pacific. And uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about drawing in perspective in Adobe Fresco. Fresco came up a moment ago. So we're going to talk about drawing in perspective and working with those tools. And I'll show you all the ins and outs of that and do a little drawing for you. So right back here at be.net slash Adobe Live. And uh, we can go ahead and do some perspective drawing together. Wouldn't that be nice? In the meantime, please. Uh, oh, Menhefen. Yeah, thank you for the comment about the line weight. Thank you. Something I practiced for many years. Um, yeah, take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and uh, please remember to be kind. And I'll say ciao for now. <laughs>